three, two, one. Hey guys, this is Victor. I am here with Trey. We're talking about his success story here, how he got a flip done. And this is how Trey got a, a 50,000, excuse me, a 50,000 potential net flip. And that's what we're going to talk about. How are you doing? Good. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you Happy taking the time here. to chat. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's, let's just jump right into it. What uh, market are you based out of? I'm in the Jacksonville, Florida market. Jacksonville, Florida. Area, because Jacksonville encompasses a lot of areas, so you got to put that surrounding in. Okay, so Jacksonville and surrounding area. Okay. And what's your background? Well, my background was uh, transportation. I used to work for the VA, actually. And then, um, you know, one day it just hit me. Real estate's always been a very successful, profitable business, and, you know, it, it's a tangible asset. So, you know, I told myself I need to start making a segue into more asset-based investments and something I can continue to grow with. So that's where the transition came in. But I came from transportation business. Okay. So you, yeah, went from transportation to real estate. Okay. And um, I understand you have a, a wife and one son. Is that right? Correct. Okay, cool. So you got a family that you're taking care of. So you wanted to help them out with real estate. Okay, cool. And then what do you do for work now? Now I still focus on real estate. Uh, I took a little step back due to uh, uncontrollable reasons, which a lot of people know about. So I I'm getting back into the game. I was on pause for a little bit. So that's pretty much where my focus is now is getting back into real estate. 100%. Gotcha. So you're back into real estate. Okay. And do you remember how we met? I do, man. It was actually on uh, Chris Chico's uh, Finding Motivated Sellers Online. You said it a couple of things and I reached out to you because you weren't too far from me. And luckily for me, you responded. You know, I was like, hey, let's meet up and chat. And you said, sure. So thank you for that one. I remember that. Yeah, we, we connected there. And then um, you're like, hey, can I meet you for coffee? And you're like an hour and a half away. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And we met in Gainesville, which is where I live. And you showed up. And I mean, I, you know, we picked it up from there. and It's, it's gone really well. Um, Thanks to you, man. You're awesome. Yeah, I, I appreciate <laughs> that. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, where were you before working with me? I was, uh, I did, I had done one wholesale and I was still working on a couple more flips and I did a couple of wholesales before that. So you, you came in and definitely gave me a lot more structure and I know I, I helped you and your mom work on another property and I was like, man, this is pretty cool. They're doing it together. I, I should be able to do the same thing. So it was, there was definitely some better guidance and direction to keep moving forward as a, as a unit, especially with family. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I remember, so we grabbed coffee and then I think a couple of days later, I walked you through a couple of the properties I was working on. I think I had three or four going at the time we worked on one. And I think one specifically actually helped out a little bit with the flooring, if I recall. Yeah. And your mom is, your mom's a hustler. And so there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. On that one. On um, that one, I partnered with my mom on that one, but I do have other partners I work with and starting to do my own deals here. Um, so the, I mean, the big question, the, the big question that you had a flip, uh, we met and then shortly thereafter you started, you got your own flip. Uh, it was like a 50 K net potential deal. I mean, tell, tell us about that. It was actually a very straightforward deal. Uh, it was done through Facebook ads. Go, go figure. I think I, I want to say it was about six or 700 bucks. Okay. That got a lead. And as soon as it came in, you know, the one thing I want to stress to people is reach out to people as soon as possible. When that lead came in, we sent her a text message. We called her and she said, sure, come over. So we were there within 10 or 15 minutes because it wasn't too far from our house. But you definitely want to get back to them as fast as possible, as fast as possible. Okay. And then what were the numbers on that one? Do you remember? So the ARV at the time was about 275, 280. It's, it was a 3-2, but it was 2,200 square feet. Huge lot, had a okay. pool, a concrete block on the outside, which are great homes to work on because you don't have to paint the outside. The roof was two or, the, two or three years old, I think. And um, we got it for 185. Okay. It was just, it, it was just a, a steal. It was in a cul-de-sac, gated community. You, just, you couldn't go wrong with it. Okay, perfect. So you got it at 185, and then you thought, you could sell it, which is ARV for like 280, 285, uh, just in that range. Um, and then what were repairs on that? Anticipated repairs? Repairs would have been about 25 to 35,000. Uh, okay. It was pretty straightforward. It was, again, since the outside was, was blocked, you don't have to do anything to it. You just kind of pressure wash the driveway and the patio, keep it moving. The pool was good. We had to get it clean because it was in some bad shape. Um, it was basically just paint the inside, do the floors, remodel the kitchen and the bathroom, and that was it. That's all I needed. Mm -hmm. So 
quick, clean deal, you know, 50K net, okay, in and out, cool. That's fantastic. Okay. Supposed to be, yeah. yeah, supposed to be fantastic. So what, what went right on that deal and what went wrong? And we'll just kind of dive into it, like what you've learned and uh, through this entire process. So the one thing that went right, I would say was, again, getting back to people as fast as possible. And just be friendly, you know, be honest with them, tell them what you're doing. And it was so funny because we went over there and the lady was like, I, I know you're probably going to sell it to somebody else. And I was like, no, we're going to keep this one. This is a good deal. <laughs> so it was, it was her and her mother and it was a huge house for them. And they were definitely older. So one thing is a lot of people are downsizing. So just, you know, keep that stuff in mind and just be helpful. That's all they wanted was a little bit of help. It was, it was a simple flip. But, you know, when you, when you start having a lot of opinions come in, that's when certain things change. And that's when it transitioned to, to bad, so to speak, more of a learning lesson. You know, I, I encourage people to look at the comps. Real estate is a copy paste business. So in that area, it was two houses, one sold for 175, one sold for or 275, I'm sorry, and one sold for 280. So I said to my partners, I said, let's try to emulate the house that sold for 280. We should get the same result, same square footage, same lot size. But instead, some people wanted to add their taste and twist to the house. And then that's when it all went. Oh. So. so it was one of those things like maybe too many chefs in the kitchen, so to speak? Correct. Okay. It was one, one chef Ramsey. And then okay. everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> thing, so. Yeah. Were you the chef Ramsey or that was somebody else? No, that was somebody else. That was somebody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first season did not win this time. Okay. So, okay. So what went right? I mean, you did the deal. So that's fantastic. First off, um, like you said, you took it from an angle. It wasn't just, just, Hey, let's do this deal. You actually, actually built a relationship with the seller. Okay. Um, okay. And then you learned a lot. So yeah. What are you looking to improve upon as you do more flips here? Like what did you learn from this one? We need to be a lot more efficient. So okay. we need to have, uh, contractors out there as soon as possible we need to know what material we're going to use mm -hmm. who we're going to use and what we're going to do as soon as it closes you need to be on the move uh, unfortunately in this case it took a little longer because they needed the money first before they could move out so we did what we uh. call a post occupancy agreement uh -huh. and we held back a thousand dollars a week until they found a new place they were out of there in three to four weeks so the mistake we made was in that time we didn't plan what we we're going to do and we should have Gotcha. So we didn't really start till about a week after they left. And that's when I was over there tearing the carpet out and taking out um, fixtures and stuff like that, which is not bad. But again, you want to be as efficient as possible. So we should have had people in place to do the work. And with that being said, let people do what they're supposed to do. So what I mean by that is if somebody does floors, don't have them doing kitchen and bathroom remodels. Let them do the floors and then find somebody else to do the other part. Yep. The benefit of that is you can have two people working at the same time. So one person can be in the bathroom, which is what they do as bathrooms. The other one can be doing the floors on the other side of the house. Efficiency is one of the most important things. We should have been out of that house in probably about a month or a month and a half. Uh -huh. Needless to say, it took us nine months. It took nine months. Oh, geez. Okay. I remember, I remember talking you through it. We spoke on the phone several times about it. And I do remember it dragged on. I didn't remember it was nine months. I thought it was more yeah. like six. Oh, yeah. Um, Interesting. Okay. <laughs> so nine months. I've, I can't get too mad at you because I've made the same mistake. Um, like you try to hire like one handyman and he's like, I can do everything. Just pay me. Right. And you're like, oh, this guy's going to be good at everything. And that, nope. that rarely shakes out. Uh, so I like that. Like kitchen person does the kitchen. Flooring does the person does the flooring. Um, that's, that's spot on. Yeah, that's spot on. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then the good thing is like what you said, like you did the deal. Um, I know on paper it was supposed to be potentially 50K net. Like that's what it was supposed to be. Do you remember what it ended up being in terms of net profit, like actual before taxes? I want to say it was about 18 to 22,000. Okay. That, 18 was, to 22. that was nine months later. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the key lessons there is, is all about speed. You know, uh -huh. it's, we, missed, we missed one of the best selling months for homes. Uh -huh. And the, re the reason it sold again was because it was in a cul-de-sac. It was block home in a, in a wonderful neighborhood. Uh -huh. So with that being said, when you drive in the neighborhood, you just want to be there. So that's some other things you should take into consideration when you're buying certain homes. The feel is what people are going to love. So we learned a big lesson on that one. Even, even if they didn't do the best work, but they did it sooner, we would have been out of the house faster and would have made gotcha. more money. 
Okay. So to well, still guys, make 2000 in nine months is not bad, I guess. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying too. On a positive note, I mean, you guys made money. You didn't lose money. Like I know you wanted 50 and you got it like 20 ish, but that's, you know, I'm, I wouldn't st- be mad if you gave me a 20 grand check instead of a 50 grand check. I'll be honest. And that was with all the mistakes. <laughs> that was with using hard money. Okay. Terrible contractors. So, you know, just efficiency, man. Have everybody lined up. So when it's time to go, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good takeaway. I know we talked about this. Like, yeah, you did a deal. And yeah, a lot of stuff went wrong, but you're still profitable. It's like you had that profit buffer and it got oh. chipped away. But right. like you s- still did pretty well. Correct. We did. We, we got lucky on that one. Okay. But, you know, it's all about when you buy. You make your money when you buy. So I guess we just bought it at the right price. And, and the market held strong and the area could sustain the prices. So it, it took, I want to say it was under contract within about one or two weeks of being on the market. It didn't take long at all. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's fantastic. $5,000 house. Yes. Mm-hmm. We got it for 280. We sold it for 280. So nine months later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's good. So you, you went through that flip um, that happened recently. You, you cashed out. And then now, like, tell me about your mindset, like you're set up now to do flips and do it better or like, where are you at now? And how do you see the future? So now I'm in more of a hybrid mindset. Um, if I can wholesale some deals, I will, but I'm trying to increase my, my profit margin to at least 40 to 50,000 on the flips. Okay. So in this case, it needs to be worth it. So if it's anywhere that's 25 to 30,000, I think somebody might be interested in, I'll wholesale it. But if not, I'm just going to keep it. You know, the goal is to, to continue to, to develop a system or you can do flips efficiency, efficiently. Uh-huh. And then with that money, uh, start to invest in multifamilies and just be able to generate cash flow. So the goal is to step back as much as possible. Flipping is still a job. You know, you have to manage contractors, you have to manage costs, you still gotta do the marketing, which is fine, but it's, you gotta see the end in the beginning. To me, multifamily is just a great place to be. So I wanna be able to wholesale if I have to, still do quite a few flips a year and then transition into taking that money and buying multifamilies and just continue to grow the, the portfolio. And that's fair. A lot of people I talk to do that where they do flips, generate cash and then buy rentals. Right. And that's, that's a valid strategy. So just overall, it sounds like your outlook's positive. Like you had a, a decent, like things went wrong on your, on this flip, but like you still want to do flips. Like you still want to keep at it and like do more, do better is what I'm getting. Is that like mostly on the right page? Correct. The main thing is, is validating the process. So I've been able to do wholesales, I've been able to do wholesales, and I've done flips. So I know the process works. It's just about being consistent. Yeah, you're going to have some bumps in the road, but you know, life is the greatest teacher. So the lesson was, again, don't have a bunch of Chef Ramsey's, you know, <laughs> focus on what works and don't overdo it. And that's one thing I love about you. You focus on what works for where the property is, and then you continue from there. You may not have to put granite in the house. You may be able to use quartz. You may not have to redo the entire kitchen. You may be able to paint the cabinets. So that's one thing that you do a great job of is you, you look at where the house is, what the area can support, and then you put that in the house. That's the mistake that we made. Again, everybody wants to be grandiose. They want to put granite this and put an island here and put that. You don't need to do all of that. Look at what's selling in the area, rents and repeat. Real estate is a copy paste business. Uh sometimes you may have to do some extra work like add a bathroom add a bedroom or knock out a wall but just make sure the comps can support that look at what other people did don't try to reinvent the wheel that's just that is so important because you walk in these houses with this vision that you don't necessarily have to have (laughs) and that's why i really like that copy paste you know it's it's simple like people are doing this you know every day no need to make it crazy or anything okay Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any other thoughts in regards to that flip, like any other advice or anything like that? You know, it's funny. We, we get into this business, you know, you see the dollar signs, but you don't see the work that kind of goes behind it. I would encourage people to, again, use your time wisely. So don't be out here trying to do all of this demo, trying to paint this and, and do this and do that. If, if you're saving five or 6,000, that's great. But can you make that money up faster by doing more marketing and doing more deals? Or are you going to really make that money up by sitting there working on this house for weeks at a time? Uh, That's one, one of the main things I learned is, you know, we all know this and we hear it so many times, be consistent with your marketing. Don't get a deal and then stop marketing until the deal is over. Because again, this one took me nine months. 
So I could have stopped marketing for nine entire months and not had anything once this closed. Uh Stay consistent with your marketing and focus on what you're good at. If you have to pay a thousand bucks for somebody to pressure wash, so what? Even though you can do it, it doesn't matter. What is that time worth to you? That was the main thing. Keep your pipeline full. That's, that mm-hmm. is so important. So important. Yeah, I, I really like that's That's really good advice, um, especially as you're getting into it. So it's not like a get rich quick scheme. Like you can get rich. It's just going to take time. And that's totally fine, you know. But if you put in the work, you get better each time you know, you learn from other people, then, I mean, you're, you're off to the races and you're going to do a ton better. Uh, like this one, you netted 20, your next one, you, like you said, 30, 40, 50, and like, then you, then you're going to do really well with it. Okay. Cool. And I'm not going to stop marketing. I want to continue to bring in deals. Even if we have to buy them and let them sit for a month, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be, when you have something that's a deal, take it down. You know, I know the wholesale f- fees sound great, 10, 15,000, but you, you got to get that experience with the flips so you can continue to grow your, your experience yourself. You know, don't, don't get caught in just wholesale, 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 like a lot of people are pushing nowadays, wholesale, 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 which is fine, but you use it to build the foundation and then continue to build your brick house. Mm. So wholesale is a stepping yeah. stone. Okay, no, that's, that's really spot on. Okay, cool. And so taking a step back in regards to that flip, so why did you decide to do business with me? One, you're very responsive. Okay, if I have a question, you, you always answer back. It may not be right away, but you get back to me within the same day. Very, very, very helpful. You know, a lot of people don't want to help. They don't want to share any information. They act like this stuff is some kind of secret. You were very open. You were very easy to talk to. And you were honest. You know, you said, hey, this is what I have going on. If you want to come by and take a look, come on by. And I did that. You know, I was, I was in the trenches with you for a day. Not a long time, but, you know, I saw that you put, your, you put the effort in. You did the actual work. So people like you in the business are very hard to find because you're not, you're not holding anything back. You're not lying about what you have going on. You know, anytime I have a question, you always help me. Um, you give me a lot of good information and people to use to try to help my business grow. You don't look at me as competition. You look at me as somebody that's part of the, the real estate investor ecosystem. A lot of people don't do that. So you want to work with people you like. And I, I thank you for that. Very good. I, thank you. Appreciate that as well. I mean, would you recommend others to work with me? Absolutely over just about anybody else out there, I would. Okay. <laughs> Again, you know, a lot of times people get really big and, and they start to fade back. The information is, is outdated. It's not very helpful. If I ask you a question, hey, how many calls does it take for you to get a deal? You'll tell me the exact number. Mm-hmm. Although that may be for you, the difference is it gives me a target. You know, yep. if you have somebody else, let's say it's a game of numbers. That doesn't tell me anything. Give mm-hmm. me some kind of target to shoot for. So then you'll even say each market is different. But for me, this is what works. So again, you give me honest, straightforward answers, and I can use those as a segue to see what works for me. Oh, okay, perfect. That's fantastic. Okay. And then why should someone who's listening take action? You know, they call it analysis paralysis. And it's very easy to continue to watch YouTube videos and listen to podcasts. And I tell people, don't do that. You know, it's so funny because a lot of these, again, gurus will tell you, listen, 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 listen. I think the most I've learned is by doing you know, you can listen all, all, all you want to, but until you get out there in the trenches and you're working on this stuff with your hands and your mind and your money, you're never going to know what it's like. <laughs> There's just too many yeah. unforeseen issues that pop up, man. There's too many unforeseen issues. You got owner-occupied houses. You got vacant houses. You got people that are squatting in a house. You're not going to have all the answers. I don't care how many YouTube videos you watch or podcasts you listen to. Until you start talking to people, you're not going to get better. So you can sit here and listen to all these scripts and how to negotiate, but if you're talking to thin air, it's not going to help you. Because you have to get real interactions. You have to have real contact with people to understand their struggles, where they're coming from, and how you can help them. Oh, that's, that's very true. No, you got to get out there. Then you start learning, you know. Right. Um, that analysis paralysis, that's huge. I think that's big for a lot of yeah. people, too. They get caught up well, in know, that. I think the problem is people say knowledge is power, and it's not true. Applied knowledge is power. Mm. It's a lot of smart people in the graveyard that did nothing <laughs> with that information. So. That's a good way to look at it. I, uh, I haven't heard that one before. I don't think I've, that's a new one for me. Yeah, they're probably not. <laughs> I like it though. I'll start using it if you're cool with that. <laughs> of course. Great. Applied knowledge is power, man. Listen, I can know what one plus one is, but if I never do an equation, what does it matter? Exactly. Well, very good. Hey, well, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, this has been very helpful and I hope it's helpful for everyone listening. Um, any final thoughts as we wrap up here? Uh, I just want to say thank you again. Uh, again, it's wonderful to work with you. You are a very good person. You're honest. You do the actual work you say you're going to do. You answer questions and you're trying to help people. You know, I just, I know you're going to stay that way, but I just encourage you as you get bigger and bigger to continue to maintain that. And the one thing I learned is 
I always say the information is free, but the actions are not. Mm. You got to put okay. the work in. I can tell you all day to go left, but if you keep going straight or going right, it doesn't matter. You, know, you, you got to put the work in. And the one thing with you is you give actionable steps to help people get to the next level, but it's up to us to get the actions done. Perfect. Well, that's a great time to end it. Thanks so much. Appreciate you taking the time and thanks everyone. See you later.